Would you join a cult if you wanted to lose weight? Keep watching to learn about the Nashville cult that urged people to pray to lose weight. Losing weight is a slow and painful process, but Gwen Shamblin Lara had a new idea. She believed that you could pray until you became thin. Despite how different Gwen's methods were, her Christian diet program was extremely popular, and so was the Remnant Fellowship, a church she started afterwards. But away from the world of dieting and weight loss, away from the world of Christianity and prayers, Gwen's fellowship was involved in a number of controversies, most of which only became public after her death. But how did Gwen manage to hide so much from the public eyes? And how did she build an empire of abuse using the label of Christianity? In this video, we will take a look at the life of Gwen Shamblin Lara and how she built a cult surrounding weight loss. Gwen Lara was born in 1955 in Memphis, where she grew up with both her parents. She then went to college where she struggled with her weight, a factor which eventually informed her decision to become a registered dietitian. Before she became an independent dietitian, for five years she worked with the Tennessee Department of Health. Eventually in 1980, at the age of 25, she decided to start her own weight control consulting practice. But something was different about Gwen's style. She argued that metabolism, genetics, and behavior are not the reasons why some people are overweight and others aren't. In 1986, she took things a little further by starting the Way Down Workshop. But just like its predecessor, this program was just as controversial. This time, Gwen argued that a proper weight loss program had no need for food restrictions, intensive exercises, or even calorie checks. Her solution was simpler. Pray yourself thin. In the early 1990s, despite the lack of a proven track record, this program had become highly popular. In 1994, the program was already active in 6,000 churches in the United States. Two years later, it had spread to countries like Great Britain and Canada. As the program grew and Gwen became more popular, money began rolling in and here is where things started getting a little sketchy. In 2001, an investigation was launched into the fortune of Gwen Shamlin Lara and how the program spent the millions it had gathered over the years. However, this investigation stopped almost as quickly as it began with Lara maintaining that half of the proceeds from the program went into taxes while the other half remained in the program. Gwen's method, even though unscientific, later showed promising results. She had also lost weight in the past, posing as a thin woman with huge blonde hair, and she used herself as an inspiration to many others. Simply, Gwen's method is summarized in her 1997 book, The Way Down Diet, a book that advises Christians to choose the love of God over the love of food. This naturally was controversial, as critics argued that she only used Christianity to promote her weight loss business. Later on, Gwen would also send an email to her church members convincing them that the Trinity is not biblical. But Gwen's biggest controversy happened in 2003, when a couple who were strong adherents of her teaching murdered their own child. On October 8, 2003, in a bid to discipline their little boy Joseph, Joseph and Sonia Smith beat the boy with a glue stick until he gave up the ghost. Despite how brutal this sounds, it wasn't the first time his parents had treated him this way. In the past, they had tied him while hitting him locked him in a room to pray after he misbehaved, and also imprisoned him in the closet for weeks. In spite of how damaging this was for Gwen's church, she still went ahead to pay for the defense of the family, a factor which made many believe that she was in support of how the boy was treated. Also, there were allegations that several other children were abused in the church premises, while some were even kept prisoners after being brought in by their parents. Former members also mentioned that Gwen ordered parents to violently hit their children, especially if they had been disobedient. But this wasn't all. A new docuseries by HBO has also revealed that there were other cases of harassment and emotional abuse all of which Gwen buried while still alive. 
An example was the fact that Gwen told members that being fat was a sin and overweight people were bound to burn in hell unless they made the decision to lose it all. Unfortunately, well alive, Gwen refused to grant interviews to several media houses and only spoke through her church and close associates. On the 29th of May 2021, Gwen Lara, alongside her husband Joe Lara, her son-in-law Brandon Hanna, and six other church leaders, died in a tragic plane crash. At the time of her death, Gwen was 66 and was still considered a prime figure in the affairs of Remnant Fellowship. Also, the weight loss evangelist left none of her billion dollar fortune to the church raising more questions about the transparency of Gwen's life. Do you think the church is still hiding something till this day? Or do you believe these accusations are baseless? Share your thoughts with us in the comments section. Thanks for watching.